I, you know, I know, because I, I know quite a few of those 12 schools, that this is the level that they're working at in order to get the types of results that, that, that they have. Without this, you're really not going to really accelerate learning in the way that you saw it in those schools. Okay, number one, maintain a tight instructional focus sustained over time. Right? Okay, that's, that's pretty self-evident. We've talked about that this, this morning. But what that means in terms of principal, be principal behavior uh, is, actually quite, is actually quite stark, right? You have to be spending a lot of time in classrooms. You need to be spending a lot of time uh, talking about, uh, about teaching. So when I use the word instruction and pedagogy and teaching, I mean the same thing. They're just different. They're just synonyms. You routinize accountability for practice and performance in face-to-face -face relationships. All right. So what that requires is that you actually talk about performance and practice in face-to-face -face situations. And you discipline those discussions by the evidence you're producing through observation. Now, there are a couple of ways in which we can there are a couple of ways that you can actually do that, right? You can do that yourself, and you can do, as a principal, go in and assess your teachers, give them a mark out of 10, right? And hold them accountable t t for that, right? And you may need to be doing that at some, at some point, all right? Depending where the school is, all right? You may need to do that to, to get things going. But you don't build powerful collaborative cultures if that's all you do, right? You, you know, what you can be doing is in, in, you know, insisting as principal that uh, I've got Irene and John here, right, that uh, they come and talk to me about the observations they have been doing together. And they bring the evidence, the portfolios from their work, and talk to us about it, all right? Uh, but these are face-to-face, -face, but these are about, you know, we are, you are therefore holding yourselves professionally accountable, right, for your own for your own development, right? And discharging your reciprocic obligation to your principal by having those professional discussions with, with him and her. Uh, you reduce isolation and open practice up to direct observation, analysis, and, and criticism. And when we use the word criticism, don't mean again in terms of giving people marks out of 10, but we, you're trying to legitimize critique inside, inside the school. It is okay to actually talk about strengths, strengths and weaknesses, right? You're not criticizing somebody, we're actually talking behaviorally about, uh, uh, about performance. Now, you know, it may take some time to get there, but unless we're able to say, look, David, you know, I actually would welcome, you know, I'm hoping that Bruce will say to me, you know, at some point this week, oh, that was actually, David, uh, this is what I hope he's gonna say, right? Um, that was a pretty good day you did with the secondary principles, you know, but, uh, did you notice that you know you, you 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 let it go? You let the pace go a little bit just just after just after lunch, or we could have done that differently, or, or the other thing differently. That's you know that's what I mean by criticism. There, that's critique. That is, you know, he is doing me uh, a favor by talking to me in that in 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 that way because that's the only way we, we, we're going to improve. You know, so we've got to be able to legitimize that and and be grateful for not grateful for that rather than being resentful. So that's why we try and move away from the mark out of 10 approach to actually getting people to actually come to their own judgments on the basis, on the basis of data. Yeah? Um, we exercise differential treatment based on performance and capacity, not on volunteerism. All right? It may well be that you have colleagues in your school who are really struggling all right, on, the basic, on the basic repertoire of teaching. So we then need to actually you know, accommodate additional support for doing that, putting them in the right triad, okay, being very clear that they'll be giving them very high quality guidelines and, and so on and so forth, right? At the other, at the other end, of the end of the scale, with the gifted and talented teachers, right, we want to be sending them out. We want to, you know, I don't know Hattie, John Hattie, is it um, John Hattie? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, John Hattie, uh, uh, personally, I, I know of his work. His work seems pr pretty good to me. We may want to send a couple of teachers over to a John Hattie type person, right? To learn firsthand some of this and bring it back to the you, you, you see what I mean? And then we devolve increased discretion based upon the practice and, and performance. We take a developmental cycle on, 
on this, right? That as t teachers become increasingly competent, then we let them fly, all right? So as a school begins to grow, you know, we move from the agreed sort of, a, you know, the, the sort of Robert Clack good lesson, right? We then go and we encourage in innovation, right? Don't do that to begin with. You encourage conformity to begin with. But as we become increasingly expert, we want people to become, you know, promiscuous in terms of, of their, so, uh, their sort of uh, acquisition of teaching strategies.